how's it going? Uh, still 2018 uh, on my end, but you probably won't be seeing this till the new year, so happy new year. I'm still enjoying my Christmas present from a co-worker. Kind of blown away. This is extremely generous. It's potato vodka imported from Poland, and it's called LVOV Lvov. I've never heard of it, but I love it. And I don't care, really care much for uh, vodka ordinarily. This, you can drink it all by itself. It's got flavor. That's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. And I don't care for vodka ordinarily. Another Bloody Mary mix. It's been a cold day, so this might warm me up. I didn't even know Tabasco made a Bloody Mary mix, but just about everybody does. I'm sure there's a Paul Newman, uh, Newman's own Bloody Mary mix out there somewhere, and I will get it if I find it. Ah. This is really, you don't even need to really mix this vodka with anything. You can enjoy it all by itself. And that is something I've never understood until now. I didn't know that vodka can be good. I'm always willing to change my mind if you give me the right evidence. And I'm still testing this. <laughs> but so far, yeah, so far, pretty damn good. Okay. I'm going through my Mennonite uh, publication list. And um, Desecration of Rosebuds. I'm, I'm assuming that these ones on the ground have been desecrated, maybe? I don't know. I have not peeked ahead. So I'm going to read this with you, for you, and we'll find out together, won't we? Oh, boy. It's loaded with antioxidants. Probably some vitamin C in there. Okay, and they repeat the title on the inside. Uh, you have seen a rosebud preparing to bloom. The green petals begin to open. And the pink petals peep through. Well, if it's that color of rose, but they got other ones. But... I get it. I get it. I get it. We must use, you know, descriptive language. If you enjoy roses, you anticipate the coming beauty. Suppose you return a week later and the rosebud lies on the ground. I was right. They got rosebuds on the ground. That's, that's heartbreaking. And apparently what this whole thing is about, I guess. Most puzzling. The green peeled away and the pink petals pulled one by one from the bloom. Maybe somebody wanted to know if that somebody loved them or not. You know? Might have been doing something scientific. You know, sometimes life must be sacrificed in a quest for knowledge. Or not. <laughs> Was it a child who knew no better? Was it youthful fascination that lacked the patience to wait for nature to do its work? Or was it some profane person who had no respect or appreciation for natural beauty? These are all possibilities. The latter being the saddest. Whatever the cause, the flower lies ruined and crushed. Desecrated. Never allowed to beauty beautify its place in the rose garden 
As a gardener, you look with dismay, but it was only a rosebud. She was a beautiful little child of three years, bright eyes, soft hair, a winning smile. Dramatic pause. And an eternal soul. Her parents and grandparents doted on her, and yet they maintained a degree of control and discipline to guide the child by moral moral principles in due time she entered public school oh this is so true actually <laughs> they went through it <sighs> but other shit happens too that will scar you good that's just life happening dear life hurts but it sure beats oblivion probably <sighs> she craved the attention and admiration of her peers, especially the boys. Since her parents had a secular approach to life, they did not have the moral stamina to resist the sinful desires of their daughter. Society added to the pressure and insisted that youth should be free to follow their natural impulses. That wasn't so... I thought Tabasco would be like burning me all up. This is very flavorful. Who would have known? I almost didn't buy it thinking, man, am I going to be drinking Tabasco sauce? There's a, that wonderful flavor of it. Nice combination. Okay. False ideas floated about the school under which, under such titles as free love, Sedu seduction ruled the day, and young men and women were allowed to follow their sinful impulses. Virgins were considered prudish. The permissive spirit allowed youth to tear away the green protective petals, end quote. No one seemed to care as they peeled away the pink fragrance fragrant petals, end quote. One by one, an exposed, crushed, and desecrated all the mystery wrapped in the bud. Ah. I'm definitely sending this to a Scientologist after I'm done. Because... You know, looking out for them. This will probably cost them a lot less money and make them feel good, too. Give you a sense of purpose. You're not just a petal. <sighs> this ruin did not stop with one bud. So they didn't just nip it in the bud, huh? All around lay the ruins of blossoming young ladies. Probably the last time that term will be used on them, huh? This is the Mennonites. They live the Old Testament mostly. 
it's okay. Forgive them. They don't know any better. Besides, they're really nice. They just, you know, the worst they'll do is shun you. And that only hurts if you give a fuck. Okay. Rosebuds of promise were exposed to the harsh realities of sin. Virginity, virginity was desecrated, plundered, and gone forever. The promised pleasure was never fully found. The divine mystery that God placed in holy matrimony would never be discovered. The gardener, capitalized, stood by and wept. But watched it all happen. Free love? There was no such thing. Yeah, I figured that out too. At least I haven't discovered it yet. Not for free. In reality, it is costly lust. Gotta know the difference. Every girl who has lost her virginity through seduction knows that something valuable is forever gone. She knows that something sacred has been desecrated. Mm, that is so good. Fornication is a violation of the conscience and a sin against one's own body. Because it's God's temple. <sighs> Flee fornication. That's in quotes. Um, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that commit, committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. 1 Corinthians 6.18 You know, they need some billboards with that on that. You know, that up there. That'll help. Impurity has the potential of ruining Otherwise good marriage, relationship, because of sin, because of this, this because the sin lingers in one's memory. Ah, oh, the terrible injustice committed against society by the teaching and permissiveness, permissiveness of this generation. Let's go back to, you know, horses and buggies. <laughs> I, I dig out of that. They got a little, like, kerosene lantern that hangs in the back at night. And a little fluorescent triangle. I don't think fluorescence was in the Bible. But that's all right. They can ride trains, too. And it depends on, you know, which group, you know, which splinter of this. Some could do a lot more things, you know. I mean, these folks actually seem semi-modern. Very nice. Hard-working, respectable, trustworthy, as far as I can tell. Where is the virgin, the, where the vir, wait, where is the virgin thus violated who does not feel cheated? Or at least let down. 
Where is the young man who can honestly say he is really satisfied with a life of defiling women? You know, everything is like a case by case. You can't lump everybody together. But I'd be one to speak since I pretty much mind my own business. Does uh, deep in the heart of most youth is the realization that something is wrong with what they call free love. I forgot to put quotations there since they're calling it that, right? Many are paying a tremendous price for such open-ended sinning. Open-ended? Okay. How everlastingly different it uh, different to come to the marriage altar pure case-by-case case situation probably it might be magic for some people maybe arranged marriage where you finally meet your wife <laughs> or whatever you know vice versa um, and go I mean I, 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 knew, I worked with this one lady who was in an arranged marriage and was mostly happy. She said, you know, he only had to, had to beat me like three times. He's a good guy. Hasn't, and it hasn't happened in years, beatings, I guess. You know, whatever makes you happy. How marvelous, marvelously sweet is the holy matrimony with God's blessing. Yeah, it's better than, you know, eating the frosting first and then the whole cake. I get it. I get it. This actually kind of makes some sense. Because, honestly, delayed gratification is a thing of the past, isn't it? Although, I'm all into it. Because, you know why? I'm a happier person. And when I do get what I want, it means something to me. How absolutely free can you feel in your heart when you can experience that relationship the Bible so aptly calls See Matthew one eighteen through twenty five. That's a long read, guys. I hope you're up to it. It's a oh god, that much? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that much. There. The rosebud is held intact. The fragrance is sweet. Never mind, I'll just leave that alone. Uh, mystery lies within its petals. It is mysterious. Like, wow, more going on there than I expected. And it's sweet. Hmm. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> Mystery lies within its petals and all its glory and all is glory and sacred. That's why they call it holiness. I'm really enjoying this track so far. I hope you are. Young man and young woman, guard your purity. Keep it sacred. Stay away from seduction. 
flee also youthful lusts. Second Timothy 2.22 Turn to God and ask Him to save you and keep you saved. You know, wax on, but no wax off. Are you defiled and ruined? Are you? Happy New Year. That was wonderful. Oh, my God. Hmm. And. Hmm. Uh-oh. I think I'm in love. Now I lost my place. Sorry. <laughs> God saves and forgives the penitent. It's almost as good as purity. It's called, you can, it's called grace. You get it with purity, but you can still get it but you don't get the purity. Well, then, whiter than snow, that's right. Maybe so. so. You know, wax on, but then you can wax off that way. <sighs> he provides grace to restore an individual to the way of peace and blessing. Do not despair, God saves the vilest sinners when they repent and turn to him. Yeah, about that. So how about that? You know, John Wayne Gacy and Ted Bundy in hell. Wait, don't forget Dahmer. And son of Sam, he's still kicking, but he's like a minister. Isn't that sweet? He's totally forgiven for everything he did. By God. Fuck anybody else who thinks otherwise. It's like declaring, I don't know, moral bankruptcy. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, man. I know I have to pay you, but oops, bankruptcy. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Repent, turn to him. Parents, fulfill your God-given res given responsibility. Protect the innocence and purity of your children. Give your life to God. Believe the Bible. You might even read it. All the way, I mean. It ain't, it's actually okay, you know, try that. Many people have done it. <sighs> Believe the Bible and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But also keep an aspirin locked between your knees and clench real hard. <laughs> That's the way you can you know, achieve nir nirvana. <sighs> Christian style. Be modest and dress your children modestly. Oh, that casual crap. From childhood on, be an example of obedience and require it of your children. It's all good. I'm not against that. Actually, I think there's a, yeah, a lot to be said for that. Well, depends, case by case person by person. I mean, you don't want to be damaging anyone, right? You don't want to be scarring somebody. You just want them to be a better person, right? Be loving and reasonable in all that you require and don't be intimidated. 
So let's say uh, you got a kid that comes out queer. What does that mean by don't be intimidated? Does that mean like, I don't care what anybody thinks, I love my kid? Or does it mean something else? Because these people do shun folks. Just wondering. Since none of them are probably on the internet, I guess I'll never know. <laughs> uh. Youth needs parental guidance and, quotation, everyone else is doing it, in quotation, is not true. Youth want direction. They may resist and test parental resolve, but are usually disappointed if parents give in to their resistance. I mean, you know, when they say no, it doesn't necessarily mean no. If you're a parent and that's your kid. But in no other way. And make sure they know that so they don't make any future mistakes and become ruined. <sighs> Know where your children are and who their associates are. Associates are, and that's really good advice, actually. Uh, surround your family with a brotherhood that believes and obeys the Bible. You know, that was almost a perfect sentence, but then, you know, four little words fucked it up at the end. <sighs> Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge end quote. Biatch. And go to Hebrews 13 4 for that little bit of ammo. Another quote. Righteousness Exalteth a, nat a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs 14.34, one of my favorite books in the Bible. <laughs> Although I still get a kick out of Jonah. I, I read it as a comedy, I don't know why. Kind of a study in, you know, bipolar disorder. And maybe a little schizophrenia. Stop Desecrating the Rosebuds. Written by Isaac Martin. And Isaac Martin. Bravo, that was the best one. I liked it a lot. And I'm going to make sure this doesn't go wasted. I'll, I have some, a couple envelopes still. That's, that the Scientologists want me to mail back to them with a the response. Let that be wrong. My response to them. Whoops. <laughs> Let me know if you learned something. Or if you just feel ruined now. Because I don't want that. And I think that's bullshit. You're not ruined until you admit you're ruined. Honestly, you got a choice in the matter. All right, I, I guess I shouldn't close yet. I, I, I have two... Two more draws to do. This is my magic book. It's paraphrased. All right, green is the first one, and red the last one. And six sided dice, so among the remaining six. This is to no point because I'm going to read them all, but this gives me a sense of uh, I don't know, order. If I roll the same number with both dice. I'll read this, which is unrelated, but looks fun. I haven't looked at anything in advance. That's a rule I make with myself to be artfully artless. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's see if you guys can see. Five and six. Five and six. Okay, so I will see you later, and wait, wait, 
five and six. Uh, last two. Oh, ho, ho. But number six is going to be a project. All right, five and six. The Christian Wife, which is probably going to be a lot of fun. And this one's going to be, well, I don't know. I'm hopeful. The Mennonites. Who are they? I think I'm going to enjoy that too. Those are the next two. And I'm whittling through these. So, I guess it'll be a four-sided dice next time. Lots of fun. Let me know if you learned something or if you have any ideas. And uh, I'm going to start reading View of the Hebrews. I'm going to try not to make it a commentary video, but I, knowing me, I'll probably fuck it up and do a lot of commentary. Uh, reading it cold, so look, you can look forward to that in 2019. View of the Hebrews, the book that Oliver Cowdery turned Joseph Smith onto. Oliver Cowdery's preacher. Uh, Ethan Smith, no relation. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. And you're not ruined. You just got to keep going, man. Where there's life, there's hope. Usually. I hope.